Hi guys, welcome back to your weekly dose of life work balance. In this video, I'll talk about the gut brain axis and how this connection has a huge influence not only on your digestive health, but also on your mental and emotional health, on productivity, and really on your overall health. If you think that the only role of your gut is to digest and absorb nutrients, keep watching because it does much more than that. My name is Sabrina Cadini. I'm your holistic precision life coach and the creator of the Life Work Balance System, helping you live and work better thanks to customized lifestyle changes. If you'd like to know more, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time I have new content for you. There's a connection between our brain and the enteric nervous system located in our digestive tract. And our gut is called second brain since it has many structural and chemical parallels to the brain. I'm sure you can all relate to the experience of having butterflies in your stomach when you are nervous or excited or going with your gut feeling when you have to make an important decision. This tight connection between brain and gut happens through the gut-brain axis, a bidirectional signaling network that involves microbes in the gut, hormones, immune cells, and the neurons in our brain. Why did I mention immune cells? Well, because most of them reside in the gut. And that tells you how important that region in our body for our health is crucial to keep you healthy. Anyway, the vagus nerve is the main communication pathway of the gut-brain axis. It runs from the brain stem, the region where the spinal cord meets the brain, to the abdomen, touching other organs along the way. And the 100 trillion of microorganisms in our gut, microbes, bacteria, fungi, viruses, are collectively called microbiome. And they're probably the most important regulators in our body. These microorganisms constantly communicate with the brain and vice versa. And they have multiple functions, such as breaking down food, producing vitamins, and helping the body absorb nutrients. But there's more. While processing foods during digestion, they produce biochemicals that influence our brain chemistry, talking about cognition, executive function, mood, etc. And they also influence our hormones, our blood sugar, our sleep cycle, and even our stress response. Since most of the neurotransmitters that our neurons use to produce responses in our entire body are produced in the gut, coming from amino acids in our diet. There's plenty of studies that now show how the gut microbiome plays a key role in our neurologic function. One in particular, and also very recent, done at the University of North Carolina and published on the Journal of American Medical Association, involved 600 middle-aged adults, around 55 years old, across four community centers. And the researchers found a significant association between measures of cognition and microbial composition showing that gut microbial, micro, microbial diversity was associated with better results on six standard cognitive tests. And I'll add the link to the study in the info box below. Now, don't be scared knowing that you have all those bugs in your body. That's totally normal. They are necessary for our health but they can become toxic if they get out of balance, causing gut dysbiosis and leading to unwanted symptoms. Various factors, including genetics, lifestyle, the environment, prolonged stress, and hormone imbalances can influence our microbiome's composition and health. But the opposite is also true. Our 
gut microorganisms that can influence our genes impacting our health. And one of the earliest signs of poor brain function may be poor gut health. See, it's all connected. Common symptoms are brain fog, poor memory, lack of coordination, inability to find words, difficulty to learn new things, or even feeling irritable and tired while you experience bloating, difficulty to digest foods, and more. And if these symptoms happen too often, your gut-brain axis may be disrupted. Unfortunately, the conventional way is to treat each issue separately with targeted drugs. But sometimes you should look into your gut first to see if there are any imbalances before opting for drugs, as they only mask the symptoms temporarily, but the underlying causes will remain and you will keep having the same issues over and over. Now, talking about tips, how can you support your gut-brain axis? With better lifestyle choices, and that's how I help my clients improve the way they live and work very often. On the digestive side, the tips that I shared in my video about the nourish pillar, I'll link it here in case you missed it, are a good start. Focus on high quality whole foods rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory nutrients, healthy fats and fiber that provides nutrition to our beneficial gut bacteria. Avoid packaged and processed foods filled with unnecessary ingredients such as sugar, refined flours, vegetable oils, and healthy fats that feed the bad bacteria, causing inflammation. Also, eating a variety of amazing foods will feed different good bacteria in your gut, and having more diversity of those microbes will enhance your health. And when you eat, pay attention to what you put in your mouth. Take the time to chew and savor the ingredients so that your microbiome can process those foods better and you'll absorb the nutrients better as well. A little warning here. I suggested that you eat anti-inflammatory foods, but which are the best ones for you, right? This can be pretty, pretty difficult and we're all different. And what may be an anti-inflammatory food for someone may actually cause inflammation in other people, believe it or not. So this is why it would be wise to work with a doctor and test to see what your gut microbial composition is so that you know which foods are best for you. On the mental side, taking care of yourself is the best way to support the gut-brain axis. And you can start with the tips that I shared in my video about the care pillar. I'll link it here for easy reference. Slowing down, making time for yourself, being more grateful and more mindful about your life can have a huge effect. The key is to switch from the sympathetic state, our go, 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 fight or flight response, to the parasympathetic state that allows you to relax and digest. But that's not all. You should also take care of your gut-brain axis with adequate sleep, regular activity, stress management, things that I shared in previous videos of this series. Our body and brain are tightly connected and what you do to your body, you do to your brain. In addition to all of this, you can also stimulate your vagus nerve to improve communication between the brain and the gut. And there are several and easy techniques that you can practice during the day, from breathing to meditating, singing, laughing, praying, yoga, uh, massage. And if you'd like to learn more, you can Google ways to activate your vagus nerve. Now, the gut-brain axis is a mind-blowing topic that I fell in love with about 10 years ago 
when I was looking for answers while experiencing burnout and some mild health issues. And learning about it helped me connect the dots, regain my health, boost my brain performance, become more successful. And today it's the foundation in my coaching practice for better productivity, better performance, more clarity and optimal well-being. Earlier, I mentioned about eating your food in a mindful way by paying attention to it and taking the time to chew, to digest and absorb the nutrients better, which is the opposite of what we do in today's life, having our meals at our work desk while watching TV or glued to our phones, right? That's mindless eating, and it can negatively impact our digestion. So mindful eating brings awareness to the act of eating, and it connects us with the physical and sensorial relationship with our food. It's about taking the time to feed and nourish our body and mind in a compassionate manner. I offer mindful eating workshops for individuals and groups where I guide the participants through an experience. They follow different prompts throughout the eating process involving all the senses. And at the end of the workshop, I equip them with scripts that they can easily follow at home to become more familiar with the practice and make it consistent in their lives. If you're interested in having me host a workshop for you, maybe with a group of friends or at your company, you'll find more information at the link below. So I will see you in episode 12 of your weekly dose of life work balance next week, where we will go back to the move pillar and I'll talk about our precious mitochondria, our energy powerhouses. If you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you'll get notified when I have new video content. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to live life fully. Bye guys!